if you could summarize, what was your work uh, that brought you the most recognition? Well, the, uh, the most recognition I got was the proof of the model conjecture. This was in '83, and uh, I profit very much. Uh, my teacher, Nastold, had a friend's bureau in Paris, and he had some ideas which I guess wasn't, weren't taken too serious by the other people in Paris. And I learned from him, and then it turned out that they worked for me. Okay. Now, is this your first HLF? No, it's maybe the fourth or so, but I didn't count. Oh, and, and so, this may be an obvious question, but why do you keep coming back? Well, I thought as a German I shouldn't boycott it. <laughs> and on the other hand, I, I don't want to come each time, so maybe I try to come each second time. Mm -hmm. uh, and what do you get from it? Well, I get from it, I meet some people and uh, well, and I uh, also get to learn other important people, especially in computer science and so, which I don't know about. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to uh, go back a little bit and ask you about your own history and, um, and about mentors who you knew and uh, papers you may have read and such. What uh, got you involved in your area? Well, I had a teacher, Professor Nastold, when he did in Münster, he did commutative algebra, which was not very fashionable at the time. And people liked more to do algebraic geometry. And so I also tried to develop into algebraic geometry. And then I met Spiro, and then I got into number theory. And uh, well, I proved the model conjecture. And after this, there were several open question which sort of had been settled ad hoc and I did a more systematic theory and so it provided me work for quite some time. Mm. Now the way you present that, it sounds like it was a very direct path, but I assume that there were difficulties along the way. Well, I guess you f uh, tend to forget about the difficulties. <laughs> uh, and how? The reason that I bring up the possible difficulties is um, I'd like to know sort of how you faced uh, any, any difficulties in reaching your goals. Well, I mean, when I started to work on the problem, I didn't uh, figure that I could solve it, but I thought some interesting mathematics might come out. And this, I think, should be the criterion that it, it's something interesting. Mm. So, how did you keep your energy up, though, when, when, uh, you know, when, when things were not so obvious? Well, I guess you have to, in some sense, you have to be a, uh, rather an, uh, an optimist, so that each time, I mean, uh, usually if you try a project, most things fail, and then you have to try a new, and you have new hopes, and so. So maybe you, it's good to have illusions and not to be too realistic. Now, some of your, your teachers and other mentors, was there a particular uh, a style of, of teaching that you responded well to, or of mentorship? Well, I guess it was just that he, that he let me do what I wanted to do. But I didn't, I mean, he didn't, uh, well, he didn't prescribe what, what I was supposed to do. And I think this was good with me. And now, of course, you uh, being being an elder statesman, so to speak, you're uh, you're a mentor to many other people. Uh, how do you approach that? Well, I usually uh, these times, if you want to get a PhD, usually there are this, these graduate schools, which means that sort of uh, people are supposed to finish in three to four years, and sort of the PhD advisor is somehow supposed to make sure of this. And so I try to figure out a problem which is doable, but which is not so central that other people might work on it. And this, I think, is the hardest part. And then I give it to the student, and then I tell him, I mean, I don't solve it completely, but I have the idea that something can be done, and then I tell it to him. And then usually he does it different than I figured out, but uh, most of the time this works. Now here at the HLF, of course, you're only seeing students for, for a week or so. Um, 
Do you approach things differently here, or, or what, what, what do you tell people, what do you talk with people about? No, I just can tell them what my example is, and uh, I'm not sure whether I should give them advice what to do, because each person is different, and what works for me may not work for others. Have any of the uh, researchers, either at this HLF or at previous ones, have any of them surprised you with, uh, with interesting questions or, or insights? Sometimes people surprise me. And, but usually, I mean, if you talk about a new topic, then people can't sort of tell much about it because they first have to learn it. It's similar if people ask me for advice about something they have thought about, then they usually know much more about the subject. And so I feel bad because I can just tell them what they already know. I'm just going to take a quick look at my, uh, my questions. What do you hope that they take away from you? Oh, I don't know what I give to other people. <laughs> any, any, do you get feedback from them at all? Not very much. I mean, I can only tell them that uh, I mean, I'm human like they are, and so I also have to struggle. You mentioned being an example, I suppose, of, of, of success. I guess I am, but I don't, I mean, I can't really say why I'm, why I've been successful. It may be luck, it may be hard work, it may have been at the right time, at the right place, but I can't really say, I mean, I cannot restart history and try again. <laughs> Speaking of history, the, the world they're facing is different, I assume, from the world you're yes. facing in your field. How do you think things are different now? I think the main difference is that there are many more mathematicians and they also invent new fields. I mean, in some sense, it's uh, the old things which we found interesting. We proved what we could prove and then we are left with the one which we couldn't prove. And usually, uh, I think often these things are not proved, but people get to have different interests and uh, go to something new where they can make progress. So I guess it's the old, it's the fate of all people to be, to be left out. To be left out? Or do, to, to be left on the course and then... Oh, I see. <laughs> well, speaking of which, what do you think are the most uh, interesting problems today in your field? Oh, the most interesting in my field, of course, uh, there's a big problem with the Riemann hypothesis, but this is... Uh, notoriously difficult. Uh, I mean, the one famous problem is the bad Schwinnett and Dyer conjecture, but I mean, all these things are notoriously difficult. And I'm thinking about uh, simpler things with elliptic curves and so on. But uh, I mean, I cannot tell people what's a good problem because if I have a good problem, I work on it myself. <laughs> and then usually I either it works or it doesn't work, and then if I give it to somebody else what I can't do, then I would feel bad. Now you say you work on it yourself, and I've, I've noticed from talking with laureates that there tend to be those who are collaborative and those who are more lone wolves, so to speak. I think I'm more of a lone wolf. Mm. Would you have any comment on sort of the different ways of working? Why, why you are that way, perhaps? I guess it's my personality. I'm not such a uh, social person like others are. And, uh, well, for me it works fine, but it maybe for others it may not work. I, I imagine that actually affects the way that you that you teach people and are taught by people. Well, I mean, uh, I usually take a topic which I know about and then I try to, I mean, to explain it and what's known and what can be done. Uh, well, but I don't know what's, uh, how different should you teach people. 
Just looking back to the Earl, as you know, the Heidelberg Laureate Forum has been going now for six years. Um, was there, what has changed in the last six years in your field? In my field, uh, well, there has, has been some progress and uh, the rest is the same. So I can't say that there has been a revolution or something. Is there anything on the horizon that you think is exciting for the next five, ten years? No, uh, what's, what's exciting you only know in five or ten years. I mean, things you have hopes for don't work, and other things you didn't think about some, some uh, suddenly come on the scene. That's an interesting response. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, the saying is a, it's difficult to talk about the future. <laughs> um. Well, talking about the HLF, since you've been to so many of them, um, have you seen a change in, in the way that these are run or in the researchers themselves? In the researchers, not really. I think uh, they started with the uh, format and some things weren't liked. For example, they gave a concert, I think, in the first one. And people didn't like this, which is not my taste, but okay. But uh, since then, I think it has pretty stabilized. And, but the researchers haven't changed much, in your opinion? No. I mean, there are all these nerdy types. <laughs> um, is there anything in particular you're looking forward to at, at this event? No, I just see what will happen. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I mean, it's, uh, well, I should say, I, 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 I come to this thing because I think the Chira Foundation is one of the few uh, foundations that give uh, money to science and mathematics especially. And so I think I should support this. Well, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs>